Paul Harrell, weekdays from 4 to 6. Learn more at paulharrell.com. We've got two guests with us. We've got Mr. Drew Tanner with us, along with his attorney, Mr. Whit Hyman. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you guys coming on the program. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Thanks for being here. All right, so I want to start with you, Drew. Uh, I've covered this story uh, before, um, but you are, you're from Searcy, is that correct? That's correct, yes. All right, so you're from Searcy. A couple of years ago, uh, you're walking into Walmart. You're open carrying legally under Act 746, and uh, you get harassed by uh, an off-duty police officer. Uh, that's, that's what I can make of this. Walk us through what happened. Okay, well, I, like you said, I was shopping in Walmart. It was probably... 11, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, it was the Saturday after Black Friday, so it's coming up on you know an anniversary of it. Uh, but I was open carrying, and this guy wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt comes up to me, asking if I'm a law enforcement officer. The second I say no, he grabs him by the arm and says, "State police, identify yourself." And of course, I you know question who he is because he says he's state police, doesn't have a badge, doesn't have a uniform on. Uh, so I asked to see his badge. Does not show me any badge. And I break free and call 911 on him. Uh, talk to 911 for a minute. They tell me to stay in the building because I'm just attempting to leave because I think this crazy guy's just, you know, trying to attack me and following me. Yeah, as far as you know, also uh, impersonating a police officer if he won't show you his badge. Right. And uh, as soon as the dispatch tells me to stay in the store, he comes up, lifts up his shirt, and shows finally shows his badge and his gun. Uh, of course, at that point, I'm thinking the badge is fake and all this identification that he's throwing out on the table is fake, too, because he's just not acting like I would assume uh, a legitimate police officer would act like. Uh, but the store manager comes up and says that I'm not allowed to open carry in the store, which contradicts what corporate office had said. Uh, but, of course, I comply with the store manager. I said, yeah, you don't want me in the store. I have no problem being in there. Uh, at that point, the... Uh, the man who allegedly is the state trooper uh, escorts me out of the store, you know, cusses me out, and we meet the Searcy police who are outside responding to my 911 call. Uh, the Searcy police ask me for ident- my identification. I have no problem giving it to them. Uh, they let me go without an issue. Yeah, because they know uh, what the I law asked, says, presumably. Uh, presumably. Uh, they. I asked for all of their identification. And the two Cersei police officers wrote down their names on a card. Uh, the guy who was pretending to be the state trooper would never, he never identified himself to me once. The only thing he said was state police. Um, the Cersei police then said that it was going to be on the police report. So the, a few days later, I got the police report. I filed a complaint uh, against the trooper once I found out his name uh, the following Monday, I think it was. Uh, and after that complaint, I also contacted Walmart corporate office to clarify what their position was as far as carrying in the store. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I did confirm that open carry was allowed in the store, provided that it was legal in the state, mm-hmm. which it was. And I asked them if they could contact their store manager in Thursday to let them know this policy. And they responded with, uh, just the next time you're carrying in the store and something happens like this, just show the manager this email. Well, I didn't want to be confrontational about it, so I went back into the store not carrying a weapon at all, not even concealed, and asked to talk to the store manager. And at that time, the same state trooper from earlier, uh, Trooper Ziegenhorn, approaches me and says, Mr. Tanner, are you carrying today? I tell him I don't have to answer any questions. He uh, asked me three or four times. So let me let me stop you here, Drew. Um, so yeah. how many days after? I mean, was this guy following you? Uh, this this happened the following Wednesday, I believe it was. It was a Tuesday or Wednesday. So it was, uh, December the third. So, yeah, it was several days later, and he arrives at the store. Uh, it was thirty seconds from when I do. We still don't have an explanation on that one. Yeah. As far as well, y'all have video of all this too. Happened. You've got you've got Walmart security cams of all of this stuff. Yeah, yes, and, and if I may interject, the guy is based out of Forest City. So what he's what is he doing in Cersei? It's not even the right troop that's supposed to patrol that area. Yeah, that is strange. That is strange. That's a, we're also talking with a, attorney Whit Hyman here. So 
Uh, so, Wit, yeah, when did y'all find that out? When did you find out that he's not even based out of Cersei? Uh, I found that out uh, as soon as I found out his name, which was that Monday. Okay, 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 so you researched. Okay, so, okay, so then he arrests you, right? Right there. You're not uh, even caring at that point, right? Well, he he doesn't arrest me. He doesn't put me under arrest, but he does put me in handcuffs and detain me for uh, what feels like a long time. Uh, it was after uh, after he asked me for uh, if I was carrying or not, and I wouldn't answer his questions. I finally did answer his question and tell him no that I was not carrying. And then he demands to see my identification. Well, he already knows who I am, so there's no purpose to see my identification other than just harass me. And I told him that. I said, you don't need to see my identification. I haven't committed any crime. I'm just standing here in line waiting to talk to a manager. You're harassing me. I'm calling down one one again. And as soon as I said I was calling down one one again, he grabs me, puts me handcuffed, and takes me outside. And he was in and, he, he was in uniform at this point, right? He wasn't in uniform yes, in the first confrontation. This time he comes back to settle a score in uniform. I mean, that's my characterization of it. Well, yes, so what's first great been, is when he came up to Drew that second time, I, I believe his exact words were, Mr. Tanner, are you carrying today? So he, he's asking for his for him to ID himself. Uh, when he already knows his identification, and we know now, based on court documents, that he'd already filed uh, a warrant for Drew's arrest before this thing even happened, or it, it was the same day. I'm assuming mm -hmm. it was before this little interaction happened. Uh, but, you know, he knows who he is. Yeah. And it, he's, I think this was the same day he he'd filed to have Drew's concealed carry license revocation, but I'd have to double-check that. Uh, Drew's con concealed carry license revoked uh, because he was open carrying. I mean, it was, it's just clearly he knows who he is. They know each other. They had an interaction the other day. So in Arkansas law, you have to ID yourself, but you don't have to give your state-issued identification if you're not driving, uh, you know, under these circumstances anyway. It's very strange, a very strange story, and, you know, uh, I know it's, uh, I, I mean, I've seen the video of all of this, and it just, it's very, like I said, it just kind of feels like he came back to settle a score. We're talking with Drew Tanner of Cersei, uh, who was uh, put in handcuffs and uh, from what appears to be, you know, harassed uh, by a state trooper that maybe just disagrees with what Act 746 entails. Also joined by his attorney, uh, Whit Hyman. Um, and I want to remind everybody, this particular segment is brought to you by the great patriots of Act 746. They're on a mission to educate the people of Arkansas about uh, constitutional carry, Arkansas Act 746, and your Second Amendment rights. So you can check them out. It's the uh, Patriots of Act 746 on the Facebook page. 11.5, uh, I think 11,000 11, strong right now. It's a great group. So, um, can you, Drew, can you kind of wrap up what exactly happened to you? Um, you're, uh, you start with a concealed carry license. It gets revoked for a time. How, how did you do uh, that? Yes. Uh, yes. The, the, during the second incident that we were just talking about, he did confiscate my license. I didn't get notification in the mail until several weeks later that it had been officially revoked. Uh, we did file in a – we did had an administrative hearing in front of the state police uh, to challenge that, and they would not uh, return it. And we appealed it to circuit court and lost in circuit court. Uh, we pulled Judge Wendell Griffin. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to be good. I'm surprised and, he found uh, time to do it, and he wasn't protesting the death penalty. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. We, uh, and, you know, after after the loss in circuit court, we I decided not to uh, press it any further uh, just because it was, you know, way too much money to spend to get a $200 license that I don't even need in the state of Arkansas. Yeah. Okay, so um, now let's move on to this. We have a Facebook post here, uh, Wit, uh, and this is what, I mean, you know, got me to contact you and uh, ask you guys if you wanted to come on and talk about this. Um, a lawsuit, raising money to file a lawsuit against the Arkansas State Police, specifically uh, also Trooper Ziegenhorn here. Um, and so you, you write, first of all, just tell me the basis of the lawsuit, uh, Wit Hyman, attorney from Fort Smith, uh, what do you think legally uh, was done to Drew that is uh, wrong? Okay, so actually Drew has quite a few different what they call reasons to 
pursue or causes of action that we're going to pursue. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm, a, I'm going to pursue a Second Amendment violation because I believe he was singled out uh, merely for open carrying a firearm. I'm also going to, you know, say, hey, there was a Fourth Amendment violation to our, you know, to his constitutional rights. Uh, and in, in the United States, you can sue uh, individuals who violate your civil rights. Uh, you can say that is its own lawsuit. Now, they have to be acting under the color of law, uh, but you can sue them. So, uh, you know, we're also going to be suing over his First Amendment rights for a variety of things. For example, he, I believe this is Trooper Zegan Horn's actions were in part due to Drew's uh, complaints that he lodged against him. And that is a retaliation against Drew's use of this complaint process, using his First Amendment right to complain to the government about the government. It doesn't get any more fundamental than that. Uh, on top of that, Drew had some First Amendment issues when he was complaining about this incident on the official Arkansas State Police Facebook page. They deleted his comments, and then they ended up blocking him uh, from participating. And we believe that is a First Amendment violation, and we're going to sue a variety of people we believe are involved in the administration of the Facebook page for that incident and try to get a permanent injunction against the Arkansas State Police to uh, not block Drew for saying the things he wants to say uh, and for anyone else who wants to express an opinion. Hmm. So, uh, as uh, you know, he also, we're going after this officer for malicious prosecution uh, and abuse of process and things like that. Uh, the meat of it is, you know, the constitutional rights violation uh, under the Arkansas Constitution as well as the federal one. And it, at the very least, I believe the second confrontation is the most egregious because even if he believes and is, and is fundamentally wrong about what Act 746 did, that second confrontation he has with the officer, uh, Drew, Drew finally tells him he's not carrying. And even if he is carrying... Drew had a concealed carry license at that point. It hadn't been revoked. So what authority did the officer have to handcuff him and search him and go through his stuff? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of it's scary. Yeah. Yeah, so so what potentially happens? I mean, let, let's say that uh, a judge or, uh, you know, let's say you're, you guys are right on all counts. I mean, what, what potentially happens uh, to the trooper here that, you know, acted, um, I, you know, illegally. I mean, subjected, you know, drew your client to, uh, you know, having his rights violated. What, what, what could happen here? Well, you know, we drew spent a lot of money on this case uh, when he was charged with the crime of obstructing governmental operations by, uh, you know, based on an affidavit filed by Trooper Zegan. And so we could, we could be, we would be able to recover. Uh, the money that, that Drew spent on his attorney, the money that he spent bonding at a jail, uh, maybe get uh, you know t money for the five hours he spent in jail, maybe get some, some money for the appeals fees that it cost him to appeal this stuff. Uh, he would get attorney fees in this lawsuit paid for. He'd get his costs paid for in this lawsuit. Uh, you know, if he's successful, he would, uh, you know, gosh, the Depending on what we can prove, because we, you know, that's another actually one of the causes of action is we've tried to ask for this guy's emails. We tried to ask for the results of Drew's, you know, complaints, mm -hmm. and they've blocked us at every turn. You know, we've, we've submitted the FOIA request, and we believe those were, I think, six of them so far have been denied, and there's a seventh one pending that they're, you know, most likely going to deny just to figure out. You know, was this guy punished or not? And, and he yeah. wasn't, obviously. Uh, but that's another that's another part of the lawsuit is that they violated his his rights under the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act. So, yeah, he could he would be able to recover on that uh, potentially. Depending on what we can prove, you might be able to get what's called punitive damages. And uh, if you can get punitive damages, then 
then he he might be able to get a little bit more money than normal. Yeah. But that that's really about it. But my our main goal, regardless of the amount of money that that you know, that's nice because that this is it's hard for me and filing with Little Rock it's two and a half hours away. Yeah. You know, I get paid a lot of money to do other stuff, but civil rights stuff. You know, so far I've won two cases, and I haven't I haven't been paid a dime. You know, so it's uh, it's uh, you know, this civil rights stuff doesn't so, really pay a lot of money. I real quick, Whit, what what kind of yeah. other cases? What, what you've you say you've won two civil rights cases? What 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 did they entail? What what uh what freedoms are we talking about? Okay, well, uh, one of my guys, he was he's not a very relatable person. Most of your listeners probably won't like him. I don't like what he did. Uh, personally, don't really care for him that much. But that's not that's not what rights are about. He, uh, one of my guys, he yelled "f you" at a state trooper uh, while driving away from him, um, and the state trooper pulled him over and arrested him for disorderly conduct. <laughs> my guy wasn't arrested before that. He just saw this state trooper giving somebody a speeding ticket, uh, you know, and he he didn't for some reason didn't like that. He's just some young punk, but uh, you know, a judge a judge ruled that that was his First Amendment right to be able to express that you know his dislike of the police. Yeah. However, yeah. unfounded, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm like the founding fathers, you know, I, I may not agree with what you say, but I'll fight to death for your right to say exactly, it. exactly. And it was, and it was unfortunate in that case because he was arrested, thrown in jail for eight hours, uh, in a in a jail cell filled with meth heads, and the toilet was overflowing with all sorts of stuff, and I'm not sure I can talk about it on the air. I don't know. Um, I, I hope I didn't say the word that he said, and you guys were able to bleep that. <laughs> Hopefully, I censored myself. I, I can't remember now. Um, but you know, he so. And then the other one I did before that was with another attorney when we sued the state of Arkansas over their election laws and how they were treating third parties differently than they were the Republicans and the Democrats. We got a judge to say, you know what, that is different, and it's mm-hmm. so different that it's unconstitutional. And I'm going to award you attorney's fees and also, you know, order the state of Arkansas to change the law. And now and so then the state of Arkansas appealed and we're trying to and that was over a year ago. And and so it's been in limbo. We just had oral arguments on it. Now the the, the judges that you appeal this stuff to are saying that it's moot and if it's they may rule that, that we don't get the attorney's fees that we spent on this or the hundreds of dollars that we spent deposing people, you know, we just wanted people to be treated fairly. Yeah. But, I mean, anyway. well, you know, the, what could be accomplished here is, a uh, I feel like is, is, uh, a lot. I mean, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, the, the, the stuff that could make drew whole, uh, drew, I mean, with, with, with everything that you, uh, went through. Uh, but I also think it could help, Honestly, Act Seven Four Six get a little yeah. get a little bit more uh, press in, in terms of, of uh, exposure about what the law actually says and how wrong this officer was. Um, and I also know on this Facebook post here, I've got up on the on the page um, that you guys are actually trying to raise money to start the process. A filing fee in federal courts four hundred dollars. Two depositions you have to take. That's four hundred dollars a piece. Um, and so if, if any of you guys out there are listening to this, you've heard Drew's story, you hear his attorney here, Whit Hyman, extremely competent. If you guys want to help out towards that and, you know, kind of uh, pursue the justice here that I think needs to be done, uh, feel free. You can call Whit. Um, is, is this your number here, Whit? Yes, 901. It's my cell phone number. Okay. So 901 413 Two six two five. That's nine zero one four one three two six two five. And uh, you've also shared this link over at Patriots of Act seven four six, which means you know you could you could check out check it out there. Uh, Drew, um, I'll give you the last word, sir. Um, what? Well, just generally, um, did you did you just generally? What are your thoughts on all this? I mean, I know you want it to work out good. Yeah, I always say, you know, I do want it to work out well. Um, like he was saying earlier, you know, a monetary gain would be nice from it, but the goal is to, you know, hold the government accountable for their wrongdoing. Wow. Well, Paul, if you would let me uh, finish it up, even if we lose this case, Paul, 
even if they say the law was so unclear, the officer did, you know, shouldn't have reasonably been expected to, uh, to know what it was. We might get a federal judge uh, to interpret the law and, and say, and so from that point going forward, you would be able to potentially sue police officers who harass people for open carrying. Mm-hmm. And if you could point to this case, hey, you know, what about Tanner v. Ziegenhorn? Yeah. You, yeah. Know, uh, you can't do that. It's been established that what I'm doing is right. You know, that case put you on notice. Mm-hmm. And so that is my underlying driving force behind it. Because I want Drew awesome. to be, you know, he tend to be the sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Holding the government accountable, uh, I think you guys are really approaching this from the right way. I hope uh, everybody uh, can give you as much support as they can to try to get the ball rolling. Uh, Drew Tanner, appreciate it, sir. Attorney Whit Hyman, I'd love to do it again soon, okay? All right. Thank All right. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everybody. Folks, we got to take a break. We're going to be back here in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. The Paul Harrell Program. Paul Harrell, weekdays from 4 to 6. Learn more at paulharrell.com. 